live from Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm Megan Kelly. Along with my co-moderators, Brett Baer and Chris Wallace. Tonight, <laughs> nice. Tonight, thousands of people here in the queue, along with millions of voters at home, will get their very first chance to see the candidates face off in a debate. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person? <laughs> Mr. Trump. So, Mr. Trump, to be clear, you're standing on a Republican primary debate. I fully stage. understand. But, uh, and I am discussing it with everybody, but I'm, you know, talking about a lot of leverage. We want to win, and we will win. But I want to win as the Republican. I want to run as the Republican nominee. So tonight you can't say if another one of these... This is what's wrong. I mean, okay. this is what's wrong. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already, hey, look, look, he's already hedging his bet on the Clintons, okay? So if he doesn't run as a Republican, maybe he supports Clinton or maybe runs as an independent. Okay. But I'd say that he's already hedging his bets because he's used to buying politicians. Well, I've given so just, him plenty of money. If, just to be clear, you can't make, we're, gonna, we're going to move on. You're not going to make the pledge tonight. I will not make the pledge at this time. Okay. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Your Twitter account... Thank you. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. I've been, I've been challenged by so many people, and I don't frankly have time for total political correctness. And to be honest with you, this country doesn't have time either. This country is in big trouble. We don't win anymore. We lose to China. We lose to Mexico, both in trade and at the border. We lose to everybody. And frankly, what I say, and oftentimes it's fun, it's kidding, we have a good time. What I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. But you know what? We, we need strength, we need energy, we need quickness, and we need brain in this country to turn it around. That I can tell you right now. 30 seconds. Border Patrol, I was at the border last week. Border Patrol people that I deal with, that I talk to, they say this is what's happening because our leaders are stupid, our politicians are stupid, and the Mexican government is much smarter, much sharper, much more cunning, and they send the bad ones over because they don't want to pay for them, they don't want to take care of them. Why should they when the stupid leaders of the United States will do it for them? And that's what's happening whether you like it or not. <laughs> and uh, capital gains. The fair tax transforms the process by which we fund Social Security and Medicare because the money paid at consumption is paid by everybody, including illegals, prostitutes, pimps, drug dealers, all the people that are freeloading off the system now. That's why it ought to be a transformed system. All right, all right, enough. Mr. Trump. It's getting a little R-rated. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Trump, you talk a lot about how you are the person on this stage to grow the economy. I want to ask you about your business record. Trump I have never gone bankrupt, by the way. I have never. But out of no, hundreds no, of but deals, but sir, excuse me. That's excuse your line, me. but the, your excuse companies me. have gone bankrupt. Out of hun what am I saying? The job I did. Again, Chris, hundreds and hundreds of deals. Four times I've taken advantage of the laws, and frankly, so has everybody else in my position. Well, sir, let's just talk about the latest example, which is Trump Entertainment Resorts, which went bankrupt in 2009. In that case alone, lenders to your company lost over a billion dollars and more than 1,100 people were laid off. Well, I let is me, that the way that you run the country? Let me tell you about the lenders. First of all, these lenders aren't babies. These are total killers. These are not the nice, sweet little people that you think, okay? You know, I mean, you're living in a world of the make-believe, Chris. You want to know the truth. Every company virtually in Atlantic City went bankrupt. Every company. And let me just tell you, I had the good sense, and I've gotten a lot of credit in the financial pages. Seven years ago, I left Atlantic City before it totally cratered. And I made a lot of money in Atlantic City, and I'm very proud of it. I want to tell you that. Very, very proud of it. And by the way, this country right now owes $19 trillion, and they need somebody like me to straighten out that mess. Senator Rubio. Even in this campaign, your critics say you often sound more like a Democrat than a Republican, calling several of your opponents on this stage things like clowns and puppets. When did you actually become a Republican? I don't think they like me very much. I'll tell you what, uh, I've evolved on many issues over the years, and you know who else has is Ronald Reagan evolved on many issues. And I am pro-life, and if you look at the question, I was in business, they asked me a question as to pro-life or choice, and I said, if you let it run, that I hate the concept of abortion. I hate the concept of abortion. And then since then, I've very much evolved. And what happened is friends of mine years ago were going to have a child, and it was going to be aborted, and it wasn't aborted. And that child today is a total superstar, a great, great child. And I saw that, and I saw other instances. And I am very, very proud to say that I am pro-life. As far as being a Republican is concerned, I come from a place, New York City, which is virtually, I mean, it's almost exclusively Democrat. And I have really started to see some of the negatives. As an example, and I have a lot of liking for this man, but the last number of months of his brother's administration were a catastrophe. And unfortunately, those few months gave us President Obama. And you can't be happy about that because too many people are suffering today in America. Mr. Trump, 30 seconds. Well, first of all, Jeb, I, I am very happy that you denied that, and I appreciate that very much. I mean, he's a true gentleman. He really is. The one thing he did say about, and I mean that, the one thing he did say about me, however, was my tone, and I also understand that. But when you have people that are cutting Christians' heads off, when you have a world at the border and at so many places that it's medieval times, we've never, it's almost got to be as bad as it ever was in terms of the violence and the horror. We don't have time for tone. We have to go out and get the job done. Mr. Trump, closing statement, sir. Our country is in serious trouble. We don't win anymore. We don't beat China in trade. We don't beat Japan with their millions and millions of cars coming into this country in trade. We can't beat Mexico at the border or in trade. We can't do anything right. Our military has to be strengthened. Our vets have to be taken care of. We have to end Obamacare, and we have to make our country great again, and I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. It's over. That's it. You relieved? You were nervous before? They're, they don't look relieved. They're like, get me out of here. <laughs> thank you all very much. And that will do it for the first Republican primary debate night of the 2016 presidential race. Our thanks to the candidates who will now be joined by their families on stage. But we're not done. The Kelly
Kelly file starts in a moment. I'll be running over to the other set. But first, Brett, Chris, they're here with me. We're going to say hello to the candidates. But All right, Dr. Carson. How you doing? Nice to see you. We're going to have a little treat today. Great to see you guys.